All right. Good morning and welcome. Eh, back up. No sneak peeks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, uh, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing um, this week. Every week we record it, and then we post that archive onto our website. Um, and I will show you at the end of today's show where you can access that. Uh, we include in our archive the uh, recording of the show um, on our, it's posted to our YouTube channel and any slides, presentations, handouts. We have some slides here and I think there will be a handout to be coming. <laughs> to be coming. <laughs> yeah. um, that will be added onto the archive page as well. Both the live show and the recording um, archive are both free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of our topics. Um, and our topics are pretty broad here on the show. Um, the Nebraska Library Commission, uh, for those of you who aren't here in Nebraska, is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska. And we are for all libraries, all types. So you will find things that are for uh, public libraries, K-12, academics, uh, college, universities, museums, uh, correction facilities, all across the board. If it's got a library, we probably have something about it on our show. Um, and we do a mixture of types of things on here, book reviews, interviews, uh, mini training sessions, demos of services and products. Um, if it has to do with libraries, we try and have something on the show about it. Uh, we bring in guest speakers um, sometimes, um, but we also have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations for us. And today we have Amanda Sweet with me here. Good morning, Amanda. Uh, she is our technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And this is the first of her going to be a monthly ongoing series of, of episodes <laughs> yeah, on Encompass Live uh, called Pretty Sweet Tech. Sweet, pretty sweet tech. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. She's been doing <laughs> blog posts. And when did you start with your Pretty Sweet Tech? Was it sometime last um, year? I think it's probably been about a year. About a year, yeah. So she's been doing weekly-ish. Yeah. Um, uh, Missed a few here and there, but. Yeah. 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 <laughs> blog posts on our Nebraska Library Commission blog about tech-related um, topics. And we've decided to make it a monthly thing on Encompass Live as well. So some more interactive uh, webinar type things like this. Uh, for the first few months, um, it's the days that we had available, <laughs> so yeah. it's not, yeah. you know, uh, so that's why we're here today. Um, eventually, starting in September, I believe it'll be the last Wednesday of every month will be Pretty Sweet Tech on Encompass Live. Sweet. So, yeah, <laughs> so you can plan ahead if that is something you are interested in. If you are the tech person at your library or have become by default <laughs> the tech person at your library, uh, the last Wednesday every month, every month you can guarantee will definitely be something um, tech related. Yeah. Uh, sometimes other ones in the month will be too. It just depends on what other ones you know I come up with. Um, but this will always be something that Amanda will be joining us um, at the end of every month. And uh, this month, today, we have virtual and augmented reality and some tips kind of slick ways to, to make that happen at your library. So I will just yeah. hand it over to you, Amanda, to tell us how we can all jump into our VR. <laughs> so was it last week that they did the, that Shadron did the VR? Um, we did actually do oh, one recently, yeah. Before. Two weeks ago, we did a show at the very, at the end of May, Let's Get Real About Virtual Reality. Mm -hmm. So, so this is kind of a follow-up to that, if you yeah, want to. Yeah. yeah. So we did have a previous show. The recordings up on our in our archives. Yeah. So I'm not going to focus too much on what they've already covered because they actually talked a bit about kind of what it was and kind of um, how to implement yeah. it into your library. So, and they did a great job with that. So oh, I'm yeah. not going to cover like the same thing again. Yeah. That was a, a show. Like I said. Um, Let's get real about virtual reality. Uh, Shadron State College, uh, two staff from there, Christine Fullerton and Nate Doherty, and then Shadron Public Library, um, Carl Spiker, Spiker from there. Um, Shadron is way western, north, 
northwestern corner of Nebraska. <laughs> oh, it should be there pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. they're getting <laughs> a big space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but they did a session about how they've been using and the out about the actual equipment that you can get yes. and yeah. recommendations and how they set up their spaces and everything. So if you're looking for that really uh, practical concrete information, yeah. go ahead and definitely watch that one first. Yeah. And I just want to make that kind of distinction that there's going to be the setting it up and using it and exposing people to the equipment in the library. And then a lot of maker spaces are also shifting over to showing people how to make it. How to create their own yeah. virtual reality. Yeah. yeah. Because the first thing, like almost guarantee if you were if you have a tacky bone in your body, when you put a, like a VR headset or like play with AR, your first question you ask yourself is, I How can, can I make that? one of these? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shiny. Yeah. So just to kind of get your mind going into this, this looks like a regular YouTube video. Mm -hmm. So if you were to just explore this in the wild, let's just hit play here. So if you look at this, would you know that you can interact with this in any way? Oh, let me see if I actually... see that thing on the upper left with the four arrows going yeah. in different directions. Oh, whoop. Okay. Must have clicked off. Mouse is still yeah. going a little wonky. <laughs> we just got new batteries. Yeah. But you can actually interact with this. And you, you can, can make the camera view turn. Yeah. You can start asking yourselves a few questions as you're watching videos like this. And you can start asking yourself, where was the camera positioned? And what perspective am I looking at this from? Hmm. And is there a different way that I could do this to cause different effects? So actually, can you navigate this better using the trackpad on the laptop? Um, yeah, but this is just on my screen. It's yeah. not going to be up there. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, actually, if you get it going and then try and use the, the arrow. Yeah, I don't know, know why our mouse is being very. It's probably a little laggy. There we go. You just got to be very gentle with it. Yeah. yeah. But when you flip the so road, you when you down, flip the view all the way around. And all the way to the back. Yeah. Well, I'll just leave that be. We can move on with it. You can see behind you. So you can look all the way around, yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Then, <laughs> yeah. So 361 is a really good way to introduce people into the world of virtual reality. But 360 video is not actually virtual reality. You can hook it up to a headset and you can view it through a headset. And it'll have the multi-dimensionality and you'll actually feel like you're in there. Mm -hmm but it's not actually VR. Mm -hmm. It's not developed in the same way and it's not actually a synthetic world. Right, that's the whole thing, virtual is, yeah. and that's different from augmented reality, yeah. which is what we're gonna talk about, the difference between those two, yeah. Yeah, so the other side of this is, I get a lot of questions about the difference between virtual reality mm -hmm. and augmented reality. So more or less, before we even go into any of this about how to build it and how to do anything with kind of immersing yourself in that world, it helps to get a clearer distinction of what it is and what it's not. So that's mm -hmm. what we're going to start out with. So on the left hand side, you've got virtual reality where you actually put on a physical headset. And if you want to see examples of it, it'll be on the next slide here. So these top two are virtual reality headsets. That's the Oculus Rift and the mm -hmm. cardboard, the Google Cardboard. Yep. And the ones down below are augmented reality headsets. And that bottom right one, that merge one, can actually do both, Oh, which is cool. Yeah. So that merge one is actually what I'll talk about a lot in this presentation because they also have usage and they have ways to develop using that merge cube and they have their own kind of developers tools and it's also more low cost mm -hmm. so since i know that's something people are wondering about what is this all yeah. going to cost yeah, yeah right yeah 
So we'll get to that when we get to that. But so virtual reality, you put in the headset, it blocks out everything around you, and all you see is that virtual world. And you can use pre-existing images, or you can build an entire world from scratch. And on the right-hand side, you have augmented reality, which actually just the most popular way to do it right now is just with your phone. Mm -hmm. You pull up a little app, and then you move your phone across the screen, like over the world. And when it registers a particular object that the developer has used as a trigger object, it will overlay a digital image over that object. And using a mobile device, you'll only be able to see that digital image on your screen itself. But it will actually appear, it'll just appear digitally. Mm -hmm. But with something like the HoloLens, which is this bottom left one, that will actually project an image outward. But it will still only be, dis be displaying on a little screen that's like right mm -hmm. on your eye. Hmm. Those things you see in these, these games coming out or maybe apps related to different movies like Jurassic Park. You know, yeah. People showing their phones yeah. and saying, oh, look, there's a dinosaur yeah. walking down the street next to me or something. And it's, it, yeah. Oh, come on, mouse. So what I'm going to do now is, mm -hmm. oh, the keyboard must be a little laggy, too. I just got two U's in YouTube. Oh. <laughs> so I'm going to show you what the HoloLens looks like. And this is like the Cadillac of augmented reality. So this is a good one. I'm creating a Wix site. You think you already have a stunning website? That's cool. You're welcome to skip or... Yep. Yes, we do. <laughs> so I'm actually going to skip the intro because it's really long. I've seen this. So this is all augmented over the stage and this platform is augmented over the stage and she's interacting with the actual digital environment it's just like in sci-fi shows like right, in yeah. star trek and yeah. throw things up on the screen yeah so this is actually made by microsoft and this is not commercially available yet but so right now they're using it more in education and construction like in industry. That makes sense, yeah. So right now, they're actually demonstrating the different ways that you can change volume and the different ways that you can adjust settings in that virtual environment. Yeah. So if we teach people how to use this, this type of thing, if we teach people how to use this type of thing in maker spaces now, mm -hmm. it actually prepares them for building this in the future. When this becomes yep. available yeah. to the general public, yeah. Because this will be a thing. It mm -hmm. won't be oh, a yeah. thing right now. Or it's like it's already seeing it on sci-fi shows and movies, so yeah. you know, yeah. now that it's become a thing, people are gonna want it. Uh, yeah. I want one. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and it's gonna open up different job opportunities for people, and if kids mm -hmm. start making it now, it's gonna like, it'll be awesome. Like it's an awesome skill to start building for mm -hmm. anybody. Mm -hmm. And so virtual reality oh. Nope, not the one I wanted. I used the arrow key on the keyboard and it didn't catch. <laughs> so when, um I won't show you the roller coaster because that causes it's disorientating. Oh, okay. So I like that, yeah. yeah. Instead, I'm gonna show. I'll grab the link out of here. See, it's hard to actually show a virtual reality environment because you are in it. Right. And you have to manage it. Yeah. And when you go to like a YouTube video or something like that, it basically looks like a video game. Like it looks mm -hmm. like. Well, like that one there. It just looks like. Yeah. 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 
kind of thing you have to experience, definitely. Basically. And it's like one of the biggest things is that a lot of times people aren't going to be interested in making AR or VR until you've actually used it. Mm -hmm. So getting people interested in it, that's your first step is interacting with it. Because I can show you as many times as I want to on a virtual screen. Like I can pull it up on YouTube or I could pull it up and show you videos, mm -hmm. but you don't get the full effect until you've actually put on one of them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Probably the easiest, quickest way, um, cheapest way to do it is to do one of those the cargo, Google, the cardboard. Google cardboard. Yeah. Yes. Cause that is just, um, cost nothing really yeah. but mm. well it's if you buy it off amazon it's 9.99 yeah. but if you have like an old piece of cardboard you can make you can it. make it yeah and it's super easy to do and there's plans to do it online already yeah um the oculus rift is ridiculously expensive that would be if you're doing a full like what we yeah. showed in our previous session they have a full room set up for <laughs> set up for yeah. this but this is also at the university they're using it as part of the curriculum yeah, this is, you know, um, go in and you can see the inside of the body, you know, like the, the, the veins and the muscles and be actually in there. And, and yeah. so things like that, um, of course. But to just kind of start learning the basics, I wouldn't invest a ton of money mm -hmm. into it because they come out with new headsets all the time. Mm -hmm. And they're going to change like the way that it's built and they're going to change how it's developed. Mm -hmm. So just do low cost. And you'll get the weight, like the feel of how it actually is built. And then you can go from there. So I'm going to move on here. So since 360 video is actually a good way to introduce VR and AR to anybody mm -hmm. even though it isn't technically virtual reality the easiest way to start is just by making 360 degree video so google street view actually has inside their app a way that you can take a 360 image of a room and you basically use the smartphone on your camera and it'll pop up you'll open up the app and then It'll display like a little white dot in the corner of the room. Then you'll aim the camera, line it up with the white dot, snap the picture, and then you'll move the camera. Another white dot will appear, snap the picture, uh, and then you just <clears throat> take them all the way around, around the room. Mm -hmm. And then the app automatically stitches those, those photos together. And then it develop it turns it into a mm -hmm. 360 environment mm. and then you can load that into any other program or the cool thing is that google street view there's a little button that looks like a little cardboard headset and mm. you can switch it into a stereoscopic view mm -hmm. and then just view it directly on there and you can slide your phone into a google Google Cardboard, and you're good to go. Cool. And if now you want to go home and do this, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because <laughs> like I was trying, my we when we moved into a new house last year, and I did kind of take a walk through video of it to show to my family. Yeah. Which yeah. Are, they're not in Steve's; they haven't been to visit, and that would have been really cool if I could have done. Yeah. Look, this is what the whole place actually looks like, not my weird walking around yeah. the house video. A lot of people use it for vacation photos too. Oh sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can also, if you're really industrious, you can just publish it to Google Maps and then anyone can view it. But if you're doing, if you're showing people how to use this in the library just for privacy purposes, mm -hmm. I would instruct people to never hit that publish button because you can't take that back. Yeah. But before you hit that publish button, it's stored locally on your phone. So you can use, you can grab it from your phone and use it in other places temporarily. Mm -hmm. But as long as you don't push it out into the world, you're mm -hmm. fine. Um, there's other 360 apps that are out there that claim to be able to do the same thing, mm -hmm. but the stitching isn't as smooth. Mm -hmm. So you have like little blurry spots. Um, with uh, one of them, I took a 360 of the like that little area where you can grab candy and stuff. 
mm -hmm. that's upstairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was missing a garbage. <laughs> so I had like a little like half floating bag that just looked like a Very little garbage strange. ghost. And I was like, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> And you'll also like if the light if there's lighting fixtures on the ceiling when you do those 360 photos, um, since you can't tweak the lighting for each different photo, mm -hmm. you get blurred out edges. <laughs> it's gonna have to. It's gonna yeah. be differently for each one. Yeah. Yeah. But Google takes that and is their software processing just somehow. as well as they can. Yeah. yeah. It's not perfect, yeah. but it also. I mean, without spending like a thousand dollars on yeah. 360 equipment, it's it's a good place. It's to a start. good way yeah. to start. Mm -hmm. And if people in your community do actually get really into it, it might be worth investing in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, sure. you never know. And so this is Merge Cube. It kind of looks like a cyborg cube it in does. Star Trek. It really yeah. does. But this is scary. <laughs> <laughs> No, I do mind. But this is actually a little foam cube, and in reality, it's probably about that big. And you can squish it. Um, it's actually designed so that if kids checked at it, like checked it at each other, it wouldn't <laughs> hurt. So, awesome. so yeah. it's safety features. Yeah. yeah. So uh -huh. this cube is actually designed so that you can augment different things on each plane of the cube. And the easiest way to see that is from their video. So you can do some cool things just by, you can turn a cube into a sphere. You can make it look like you just took a chunk out of it. Mm -hmm. You can do a lot with it. So they're using it for educational purposes. They're using it for <clears throat> like, they also have, so this is great for pretty much any kind of school or library that's out there. Mm -hmm. And they pretty much put together everything known to man on this site that you could use for this cube or that you would need to know for this cube. And that's, that's great because it's a lot of places I think are struggling with is, okay, so all this high tech stuff is great, VR, VR, but what do I do? Yeah. And yeah. If someone has already put together the curriculum or the educational part, I think yeah. that helps a lot of places um, make that yeah. to why i mean at a university of course at shadman state college yeah the whole their whole reason for doing it is yeah. what does that what do the faculty need and if they come to us wanting something we can make it in vr or yeah. or something um and but, that's a whole other brand of instruction design. Yes, like yes. that's a whole other animal mm -hmm. but and that's why for our purposes i mainly just chose things that have like a lot of examples of how it's yeah. being used and how it could be so used. Yeah, with it already. Yeah. 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 So how much does a merge cube cost? Do Found one for two bucks at Barnes and Noble. Two? Yeah. Not two hundred. Two. No, two bucks. Because it's it's low cost. It's just a little phone so, cube. Like uh, that's it. And the headset itself, I found it for fifty bucks on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for fifty two bucks you can have a pretty good learning kit so for this you do need you get the cube and then the headset you need both yeah. To, yeah. to do this yeah. okay um there are you actually get more bang for your buck if you do get the pair mm -hmm. because the with the headset you can do vr and ar and then you can right. also learn how to develop for both of them and then you can I mean, the cube isn't the only way to do AR. Mm -hmm. It's just no. that if you do it any other way, um, when I get to the part about how AR is actually made, um, you'll see that AR has to work based on little anchor points that are associated with an actual object. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to overlay something over this cup of coffee, 
you would load it into a program like Unity or something like that. And then Unity would load the image in and you would see a bunch of little white dots that go around this cup. And it would be looking for points, like pixel points that make this cup distinctly different from any other object in the world. Mm -hmm. And so it would look at, and then you would have to program in the actual approximate size of this cup. It's like when you see the in the movies and they're doing CGI, yeah. um, or the motion capture on the actors, and you see they've got dots on their faces or on their yeah. on the outfits yeah. they have to wear to catch to capture them yeah. to then build the like the Hulk on top of yeah. Mark Ruffalo's actual body. <laughs> yeah. And that's why when you go to the DMV and they ask you to either take off of the, off your glasses or put them back on or put your hair in a certain way, they're actually setting your face up so that it can be recognized with them um, facial image and yeah, facial recognition software. Uh -huh. And if your hair is flopped over in a certain like key feature of like your face mm -hmm. shape or if your glasses are work. glaring, then facial recognition won't Mm -hmm. recognize your face and that's yeah. half the reason they do those IDs mm -hmm. which some people might like but that's a whole yeah. different episode. yeah that's a whole different topic yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people don't want to have their face recognition right yeah but. and I mean there's even apps out there that basically use facial recognition to like did you ever see the ones where you can put like a little app in and then it'll put like overlay little ears oh yeah like a little yeah that's augmented reality it's mm -hmm. just the mobile version of augmented reality and it's basically finding your, it's looking at an image of your face, it's finding the outer perimeter of your head, mm -hmm. and it's finding and the approximate like place, and then it just pop them little cat ears on there. Mm -hmm. So that's about it. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what you'll be, like what you would be showing people how to do, is the software is basically pre-built. Mm -hmm. So the developers that came before us, they already built all the libraries that would make this a lot easier to do. So we don't have to know how, like the ins and outs of how facial recognition works or how these anchor points work because the system already, it's pre-built in so that it does it for us. And it makes it like it's that's why getting into AR and VR is a lot easier now mm -hmm. than it was when it first came out. Oh, yeah. Because VR is not new. It's no. I mean, it's been around since like mid like 1960s. But it hasn't been in reach of the general public yeah. as much yeah. it is, as it is now. I mean, you walk yeah. into a Best Buy and there's people trying out the Oculus or in there yeah. you know, with it on. And it's something people could actually afford. It's commercially yeah, available. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's also the earlier versions of it that came out for video games and things like mm -hmm. that. They cause too much disorientation. That's what a lot. Of, yeah, yeah, I know a lot of people have issues with it just in general. That yeah, it does that. But and they fixed a lot of the optics in there. So like Oculus Rift, they're actually playing around with being able to track your eye motion, oh. so that it would know we, like even if you didn't turn your head, it would know where your eyes are going because the earlier versions of the headsets, it used like a gyroscope and accelerometer to actually know when you turned your physical head. That's but not how wouldn't... people do things. Yeah. yeah. But you can just sit straight forward and you turn your eye. Mm -hmm. And now headsets are actually getting better at knowing mm -hmm. when that'll happen, which is both creepy and awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. But, and as like the tech gets better, it also the applications for it also get better. So with that merge cube that we were talking about before, there's also a commercially available app that's called CoSpaces. Um, it's mm. CoSpaces.edu, and it Is that was actually had on the slides? yeah, yeah. I think um, I've got it yeah. here. So oh, leggy mouse, leggy mouse, mm -hmm. come on. So this is actually great for both educators and librarians. So there's a free option of this so that this is actually one that I loaded onto my own phone too. And I played around with it, I, I've mm -hmm. used it. So when you open up the actual app itself, it'll give you 
a few different options to start create. It'll ask you if you want to create a space. You'll click on create space. Then it'll open up different menu options. And you'll be able to load in different pre-built 3D images into your space. Cool. So the cool thing is that you don't have to go through and make people build their own 3D models out of what it, their preferred program. <laughs> And, but you can, I have options in there mm -hmm. later in the slides, but, and you can also load in your own environment. So that 3D, that 360 video footage that I took upstairs, mm -hmm. I was able to load that as an environment into this app. And then I was able to overlay these 360 objects over the library so I mounted one on the table next to like the little dish and it looks like he's kind of you know, <laughs> candy you know, like back away little dog you know. <laughs> but you can do some fun stuff with it and basically it would start out just learning the general skills and having fun with it mm -hmm. And but kind of take note of which skills you're learning like take note of whether you're learning how to anchor an object in a particular point, or if you're learning how to anchor an object that'll stay even when you're moving the physical object in the real world. And once you, like, as you learn more about what the technology can do, then you can think of more ways to use it. And that's a lot of the reason why, like, I would bring in new equipment to a library. And if you just walk in, plunk something down and say, build VR, <laughs> they'll just look at you like you have two heads. <laughs> <laughs> Do what? And rightfully so. <laughs> you know. But the funny thing about a lot of this technology is that you don't know what to do with it until you know about it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of circular yeah. like that. Yeah, That's like what you're talking about. A lot of our maker spaces are that people yeah. have heard about 3D printing and and all the other equipment that we're yeah. bringing in and until they physically see it happen there's not that yeah. light bulb moment yeah. yeah and it's like and the deeper you go into it the more applications you can think of it mm -hmm. and the more you can kind of like the more comfortable you get with it then the more you'll use it mm -hmm. and it's kind of but it's that frustration level in the beginning that's sure. kind of <laughs> like i just broke 20 things in a row <laughs> Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> you know? That's okay. It's all you know? a learning experience. It's yeah. all so remember I was talking about the 3D design where you can make your own objects. Mm -hmm. So I actually recommend that people just start by sketching something out on a pad and just kind of get the ideas flowing and get an idea of what they actually want to make. So if they want to make a frog that looks like he's kind of reaching up and clinging onto a tree, then you start kind of outlining the little web pads and mm -hmm. where that'll look in a 3D model. And then you can go into either Tinkercad or Blender and you can, you can use pre-made shapes to kind of create that image. So, what does my time look like? 20 more minutes. Yeah, we can play with Tinkercad. Uh, it doesn't like the slash. There we go. So this is, this is actually the program that most people are already using or already know about. Mm -hmm. So this That's is the I've one that of, I, yeah. yeah. So this is the one that I usually recommend because if we're already introducing okay. VR and AR, which is completely out of the realm of what most people have seen. Mm -hmm. So if you pair that thing that people aren't used to with something that people are used to and put those together, it makes the learning curve like a lot less painful. Mm -hmm. But if you were to pair virtual re like building virtual reality with blender another program that they've never seen before then it almost yeah. seems insurmountable mm -hmm. uh, 
I was shooting for create new design and I got random stuff. <laughs> Uh, there we go. So this is a great way to get used to a 3D environment and like a 3D plane. So you can grab one of these pre-made shapes, drag it over into a new environment. And this is you now your 360 world. The mouse is making this a lot bigger <laughs> than I wanted to. Oh, I, on. This will be a lot so. easier if you have a mouse that's working. Mm. Okay. I'm just going to, this one actually still exists out there. But I'm just going to grab a different here one. instead of the mouse pad. Let's try it. I'm uh, it's a mouse pad issue. There you go. A little better. Control, yeah. yeah. So then you can rotate it around. Hey, eh, there's where other ball landed. <laughs> That's cool that you can, yeah. yeah. And it's nice that I, I see this as recognizable too. That's a graph, like graph paper. Yeah. That yeah. I can totally, I can wrap, I can wrap my mind around that, that yeah. that's a thing that I'm using, yeah. And then you can kind of get the gist of how you want to do something like this. Like, you can even pre-build this and prototype it in Tinkercad. Mm -hmm. And then you have an idea of what it looks like in your mind for when you're actually building the physical virtual reality. Uh, since we only have about 15 minutes left, I'm just going to go into the... actually making it like the environments where you can actually build it so this is if you want to get really 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 hardcore into it and you want to build something that is for an actual audience mm -hmm. so this would be once you've gotten the skills down and you kind of have started making something look functional then you can actually start thinking about how people will use it mm -hmm. and which if in your community you have a manufacturing plant and they wanted to be able to hold a phone or a device up in front of a machine and be able to label different objects, there's actually only about three different skills that you need before you're able to do that. So if you're able to anchor points onto an object, you can, and you're able to generate little images that have little labels on it, that have like a little direct point there mm -hmm. and you're able to anchor a specific corner of a new object into a point three skills and you're able to label a machine like in a manufacturing area mm -hmm. I mean it gets a lot more it can be a lot more complicated and intricate than that that's good for like functional. Cheap, that's good for training training yeah. new employees of what's what yeah yeah I mean if you if you're one of the libraries that has the makerspace equipment, you could even play with your 3D printer and you can label the object, the elements of your 3D printer using mm -hmm. an augmented reality app and say this is where the extruder is and this is where the filament is and then you can put mm -hmm. a little arrow up showing how to pull the filament tray out of the, out of the machine and you can program it so that you can make build step by step how to use a 3D printer. And then you'd be using emerging technology to teach emerging technology. <laughs> yeah. The circle is complete. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but let's see, we have 15 yeah, minutes. Pretty good. Cool. We'll go as long as it takes to get through all the info. Yeah. yeah. So do I go full screen for this? Or yeah, may as well. I have other links in here, oh, so okay. I was just going to pop out yeah, yeah. yeah. So before you start doing this part where you're actually building a physical environment, that is your, that's your idea building stage. It's the way to get people motivated. But if people start with too big of an idea, when they actually start breaking that idea down into the smaller steps that it would take to make it functional, there's a big overwhelm there. Mm -hmm. 
So before, like you're getting people motivated, you're starting to think of awesome complex way to use this technology and then try to make it so that expectation meets reality. Because if you think of even our project where we're adding labels onto a 3D printer, it's possible. It's definitely possible. Mm -hmm. And pretty much anyone with a Google Cardboard and a piece of equipment would be able to do it. But when it gets down to actually building those little micro skills, take your time and don't rush it. And if you have other people in the library that are pressuring you and saying like, this is a timeline that we have to meet and your learning pace isn't matching their timeline, that's when projects fail. Mm -hmm. So take your time with it and get other people to try it out. And a lot of this technology is, a, is like more of a social learning experience because you're gonna run into areas where you get stuck. And then you'll need to reach out to other places and find out different forums or people that are working on similar things and start asking questions. And if the people in your immediate physical environment say, okay, you tried, this is too hard, just stop it. <laughs> you probably will. <laughs> so, Try to build that environment that says this is going to take time, but it's going to be worth it in the long run. And say, I know that this is the thing that we want to apply it to eventually, but we'll get there. So it's kind of expectation meet reality. And the technology has will always have a lot of hype around it and people will always put more on technology than it's able to do. So when you start building it, you'll start recognizing that. And you'll need to mesh up the reality with expectation. Mm -hmm. I've said that about 20 times now, but I'm mean it. That's how it's what this all is like, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. That's just like, the 3D maker bot replicator plus cannot actually replicate an object like Star Trek. <laughs> Won't happen. Yeah. And no. this, that's what they, I think a lot of people don't get the speed of yeah. it. Yeah. It's not instantaneous. It's going to take hours potentially. Yeah. Uh, depending on how big a thing you're making, come back tomorrow potentially. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people aren't getting that that's not where we're, we're not there yet. Yeah. Not to Star Trek. But, but the things we can do are really cool if yeah. you just learn what they're actually able to do right now. Yeah. Yeah. And VR and AR, if you have an image in your mind and you have a science fiction movie in your mind, you'll be disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> so just play around with it, look at it, observe it, discover it, get used to it. Then you can start getting hardcore into it. So if you actually find people in your community that want to do this for a living, mm -hmm. if you find people that actually want to apply it for a community purpose and apply it toward, if they actually do want to label their 3D printer and use augmented reality to teach 3D printing, cool. These are the micro skills I was talking about. So HTML5 and CSS3 or, and JavaScript, those are the main three things that you would use for building a website. And that's why this program is called From Website Building to VR, is because you can take those three skills and take them in a lot of different directions. But those three skills are also broken down into several different micro skills too. So if people want to get really good at this, it's going to take time. And that social learning environment is important. And when I say social learning environment, I mean like, like we have book clubs. Mm -hmm. We get together, we talk about books, and we talk about how books impact our lives and how books change 
our perspective and how a lot of things. With this social learning for technology, we're doing something similar. We're talking about how we are collectively learning technology and how the things that we're running into, the issues we're running into, and how this technology has changed our perspective as we learned it. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Book clubs mm -hmm. and learning technology. <laughs> you never knew they were related. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so these are the three, these are all from Code Academy just because they're free and they're broken down into smaller little videos that say like HTML is basically the text that puts the image up onto the screen. And it's the physical elements that appear on there. But CSS makes it look pretty. Mm -hmm. So if you have like a little, this is actually called an unordered list. And this would be a heading. So this would be labeled H2 mm -hmm. is a, a type of heading. So I used H2 because H1 would be a title and mm -hmm. it would actually be larger and more prominent than that. And these would be listed out And this link for it to be functional there's a quick lesson in HTML what codes look like yeah. <laughs> it's not that much to do it really you think know. coding is so much behind the scenes but these little bits get you each thing you're starting out your list with the OL and then LI for each item in it and now I'll actually get rid of this last one so you can see the whole thing on the screen. So that's the code that it would take to make that list. Mm -hmm. And on the screen, the link would look like JavaScript with a little underline on it. You see those on websites before, yeah. yep. Yeah. Where the word itself is the link, yep. And then you click on JavaScript and it goes over to this link here. So this is all HTML is. And then CSS makes it look pretty. And then you would link this over and you could turn it into make the color, the font color red. HTML recognizes a lot of different colors yeah. but if you had a specific color in mind you would need a hex color All which would be cool like numbers. a little number yeah. that starts with like a little hashtag and then you can change the font size you can change the you can make it bold you can make it you can do a lot of things with it but this is basically your basic elements of html css it's how mm -hmm. to make this 
appear on a page. And once you get more familiar with that, then you can start going into A-Frame. Oh, I have it open here. And A-Frame, this will start to look pretty familiar. You remember when I had the H2 tags, mm -hmm. and it's like the start of the tag and the end of the tag? So you can see this end tag here. And then you can see that start tag. And the only real difference between regular HTML and HTML for virtual reality is what this links over to. So this actually represents a full image. And in this case, it is a box. So looking at this in the real world, well, not real world, virtual <laughs> world, you would actually go into Glitch here. And Glitch will let you, in a lot, when you're developing a lot of other things, you have to download stuff onto your computer. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to d download like a code editor, like Notepad++ or Atom or something like that. And you would have to type the code into there. This doesn't make you do that. This it's one, online. Yeah. you go to, and that code generates this. And then you can see the actual code. Remix to edit. And you want to go into index because that's your main page. You and see this, built those, yeah. yeah. So then, oh, one thing I forgot to add to my little thing. HTML and body. For any HTML to work, you have to specify what it is. And then I'm, I'm not going to teach a whole HTML <laughs> yeah. thing right now, but it's, oh, here's my, the mouse is lagging again, so I'm circling in. <laughs> and so this here specifies how that image would appear on your actual plane. So these are the, the position is the X, Y, and Z axis where that is positioned on the actual screen. So in here, position would mean if I wanted to change the X axis, I could shift this square so that it appeared over here instead of mm -hmm. over here. And Z, I could shift it up and down. And Y, I could move it back and forth. And that's stuff you learned about in like High school, yeah. X, Y, Z, all those access things. Yep. Mm -hmm. See, and you said in algebra, we'd never use it again in your right. life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And rotation would be like how it appears on the actual plane itself. So it's a, it's automatically rotated at a 45 degree angle. If you see what that looks like here, I'm talking about this one right here. Box, yeah. And then go to view source. We change the this to 90 and then go to view app and now it's at a 90 degree so one of the best ways to learn about this is to just pull up an existing project and start tweaking it things mm -hmm. yeah. and then the shading the shadow thing over here mm. is also another huge part of building a virtual environment to make it realistic yeah yeah because if i like if you, there's actually two lights coming at me right now. <laughs> if you saw me right now and I didn't have a shadow, you would start yelling, go. <laughs> and if you go pop into a virtual environment where it's supposed to be replicating reality. Mm, it's supposed to make you feel like you're actually yeah. there or you need that, yeah. I mean, and if the shadow is like a little bit off on a virtual oh, environment, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And so here. And then the plane is actually that green background there. Mm -hmm. So we can make that bigger. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then when you make this back, this bigger, it changes the way you perceive these. Mm -hmm. These three objects haven't changed at all, but because this changed, you perceive it differently. So then we move it, if we make this smaller than it was before. Yeah. Objects may appear bigger than <laughs> I'm going to put that back to where it was. And then the color, this is that hex color that I was yeah. talking about. So you can pretty much change it to any color under the sun. Mm -hmm. And there's websites out there oh, yeah, that will tell all you. Those codes, yeah. yeah, to find out which shade you want. Yeah. Oh, no, if I had to memorize all those, oh, no. I'd be... No, nope. <laughs> Nobody needs to do that. <laughs> Everything would be black or white because it's all the same. <laughs> F -f 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 -f. And it's 11.02, so I'll probably okay. just stop there. But I'll just mention briefly Unity. Uh, my mouse went <laughs> overshot. So Unity is another option for building virtual reality. And this is actually, it's more industry accepted, I guess you could say. Hmm, okay. Like A-Frame and Unity, they both have a really huge support environment, but Unity, it just said that you can, it's more versatile. Hmm. And it's also used for more game design mm -hmm. and it has more, it has a ton of tutorials. That's good. It's a touch like it's a touch more difficult to use just because you need to learn a different language to do it. But once you've learned how JavaScript works, it mm -hmm. gets easier to learn C sharp and different things like that. So JavaScript for and or Android is written in Java, so I just said so. Unity for Android development is the easier entry point than trying to build it directly for like Oculus or mm -hmm. something like that. One, because Oculus is ridiculously expensive. <laughs> yeah. And so this will run you through everything you need to know. Like just start at the top and work your way down and even just reading this will tell you like 8 billion things that you didn't know before. And my favorite one is actually the physics one. Because if you're replicating a real world and you throw a ball out into the world and it doesn't hit the ground, mm -hmm. people might kind of look at it weird. Just a bit. <laughs> what happened to gravity? All right. I mean, unless you're in space and you don't want gravity, but even then there's still physics. Mm -hmm. So it's understanding the physics of the real world so that you can replicate it in a virtual world. Sure. And there's even really cool, simple, easy lessons you can do in the class. Like that's already how they teach physics. Mm -hmm. You're just replicating it. And that's awesome. Yeah. Anyway, food for thought. Cool physics. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they added new stuff on here. Cool. Anyway, if you have any questions about different environments you can build in or different programs you can use to, br to build 3D models or different things that you might want to add into your makerspace for virtual or augmented reality, mm. you know where I am. Tech happens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. All right. And this is actually, I see your slides here. You're already talking about all of this that you have on the slides. Yeah. So you and that's kind why of I skipped it. Yeah. So it just... But these slides will all be available for you guys all afterwards. And that page, the one that we, she did on the editing from, it won't be like that. It will yeah. have those yeah. original links. We're not saving this. No, <laughs> no. As, as is, we will have the, uh, the, all of the actual links that are supposed to be there will be there when we, uh, when I link to it later for the recording. Yeah. yeah. Where is that? Here, I'm just going <clears> to. <throat> yeah. 
there we go. Yeah, back to normal. Awesome. Sweet. <laughs> Google Sheets are great. Aren't they? <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, doesn't look going to be any questions, and that's great. This is a lot of information uh, uh, for today. But um, I think it was really good, though, to learn all about this and realizing the connection. Like, I've used HTML for longer than I'd like to say, <laughs> um, you know, building web pages before we had the really easy software programs and, and yeah. that type of thing. And seeing that it can also be used to do this um, VR and AR is, is really kind of cool to realize that something I've been using yeah. and you, you probably have been using for years can actually be used for something else now yeah. that is becoming really big. And there's the, so many tutorials and helpful things out there. something great to do um, with your kids or your teens. I think to get them into, like you said, this this is what's going to be coming, um, and it's they need thing. to start <laughs> look, start learning about it for fun at the library. Yeah, and with all the other things that you're doing in your makerspace and your programs. Yeah, I saw one of them had um, oh, which one is it the uh, no, something about the moonshot. Where was it? Oh, um, there's a lot of VR stuff out there that has. Yeah, maybe you close it. But one of them had something about that that yeah that um, related to um, this year's summer reading program, yep. yeah. which I know a lot of you probably got things already you're already doing that and and going with it. But um, if it's something that you can throw in there um, easily, you can go look for that. Um, or some of the kids are going to be getting into hopefully space and exploration and things like that yeah. is something to lead them to maybe afterwards um, to explore some of these things. And right. A-Frame has a pre-built space background. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. That you can just grab from their page and use it. Yeah. yeah. That A sky tag is the like the top background. Oh, nice. All right. All right. Anything else you wanna? That's, that's, right. There's only yeah. so much you can cover. And <laughs> <laughs> it is, yes, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, but that's why we're going to have all those slides and the links up there and everything. And of course, as Amanda said, you know where she is here at the Library Commission. Um, you can reach out to her looking at our on our website. Uh, so if we go to our Encompass Live page here, there we go. Um, you can uh, look for her contact info on here if you're not sure. The Today Show has been recorded and it will be here in our archives. These are our upcoming shows, uh, but our archives are here. And uh, this one for today will be right at the top. Here's what we were talking about before that um, our Shadron um, people had done. Yeah. Let's get real about virtual realities. If you want to watch that recording and see their presentation slides, that's there. So definitely take a look at that one and then look for today's show. The top of the list should be up by tomorrow morning uh, sometime. Uh, everyone who attended today or who registered for today's show will get notice from me when it's ready. Uh, we also push out on all our various social media. We have mailing lists here at the Library Commission and uh, Twitter, Facebook and everything. We'll push it out there. Uh, we had mentioned that uh, Pretty Sweet Tech is going to be a regular show, as I said, and we have here uh, placeholders, I guess we'll say, for the upcoming yeah. shows. Not sure what the topics are yet. That's something we may be working on <laughs> yeah. as soon as we know it'll get added. But you'll see it is here on our calendar. July 3rd is the next one, and then August 14th, and then after that in September it starts, and I just don't have it up on here yet, September 25th, which is the last Wednesday of September, um, and that's putting it into its regular slot. Um, regular monthly slot. So um, keep an eye on it. Here is her logo. We have our wonderful um, PR people, our graphic design people here, Tessa and Kayla put this together. So that'll be with every every show. So uh, look and keep an eye on see what she's going to be talking about um, next month and in the future ones. Um, Next week, though, we've got uh, partnerships uh, going a different direction. Growing partnerships were least expected. Uh, Tina Walker, who's a director at Key Memorial Library here in our Fremont, Nebraska, is going to talk about partnerships that they've put together in the, their community to um, help with the, uh, the developing the library, um, new services, new buildings, everything they're working on there. So um, please do join us. Sign up for next week's show. It'll be about partnerships. 
Um, you'll notice I've got a, a lot of other shows listed here and some open dates still. I'm still working on finalizing some things on the calendar, so keep an eye on here. You'll see when we get things finalized, new, new uh, shows will come up. We do do the show every Wednesday morning, so don't worry, those empty dates there are just still in progress. <laughs> Trying to get it going. Um, also, as I mentioned, social media, we do have a Facebook page, so if you are on Facebook, go over to our Encompass Live page and give us a like over there. You'll get notifications of when shows are coming up. Here's one about logging in today. I sent up, put up a reminder to log in on this live for today's show. Um, or, no, I don't want to log in right now. Facebook, thank you. Or uh, rem letting people know when the recordings of previous shows are available. We post on here as well. Uh, so if you do like to use uh, Facebook to keep up on things, definitely give us a like over there. Where is my page? There it is. All right. Um... And I think that's it. I don't have anything else to say. Yeah, we are good. Uh, so definitely uh, keep an eye on our archives, keep an eye on our upcoming sessions, and hopefully we will see you next time on Encompass Live. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Bye-bye. <laughs> and check out some VR out there. <laughs> Get virtual. All right.